What oh, about no. um, oh, well, you know. the tax man, Big Brian Cockrell, who I'm good friends with. I love Brian. Oh, He's a great Brian, guy. Yeah, well, me and Brian have been friends for well, 1994. We became friends, but we didn't start out as as best of pals because you know, with all the Chinese whispers, yeah, people whispering in my ear. Oh, I've had Brian Cockrell wants to fight you. Says, does he? Says, yeah, there's a rumor going around. Brian Cockle wants to fight you. Says, does he? Well, tell Brian Cockle I'll fucking fight him. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, and, and I think people were whispering in Brian's ear, mm-hmm. saying, yeah, hey, Richie wants to fight you. And he says, she also wants to fight me. Tell us, she I'll fucking fight him. He wants to fight me. So it was like that. Now people were trying to bring us together for a fight. Mm-hmm. You know, like they did with Dave and uh, yeah. the Chinese whispers whether it was true or not or whether just people were trying to move you like pawns you know yeah playing the game yeah did you enjoy that though so, as well but nah the fuck nah so then it's just to fight people yeah just fighting because what we were getting out of at the yeah. end yeah yeah people are bad but uh, there was a a crime family well, well, I've I got sick of hearing, the, and I saw a phone for someone up, and I says, "I've heard Brian Cockle wants to fight me. Tell him I'll fucking fight him if he wants to fight me." I says, "All right, I'll, I'll tell him. Yeah, there's rumours going all over." So anyway, there was a, a crime family got involved and wanted, oh, were friends with Brian, who were friends mm-hmm. with me, but there was a little bit iffy with us because we we needed to break the ice again. So we had to meet them in a pub somewhere. So me and my pal Vic, we went to meet them and Brian wasn't there. I says, where's Brian? He said, oh, he hasn't come, we've come. And we sorted it all out then. He, he said, we, we don't want you and Brian fighting because someone's going to get killed, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> He had a fucking big magnum took him this way. Fuck like Dirty Harry. <laughs> but, uh, honest and uh, anyway, so I so, said, uh, I'll have to arrange a meeting with own Brian. I was, uh, mm. I says, right, yeah, nice one. So then we met, went out of town, met Brian. Fucking right. But from that day, we were great friends, yeah. really good friends. Yeah. And he's, he, you just get an uh, impression of somebody. Mm-hmm. Without meeting them, they'd say all these bad things, and this about and you get you have an impression of someone before you even meet them. Like people used to say bad things about me. So Richie Osley, the name would say, "Oh, Richie Osley, oh, it's horrible." Yeah. Name. But have you sat down and had a cup of tea with Richie mm-hmm. Osley and spoke to him? Yeah. No. Well, why make judgments yeah. then? I was the same with Brian when I met Brian. I thought just a big fog. But then you actually listen to him, he's, he's bang on, man. He's very intelligent, very smart. Great when big he got, guy. When he got his two and a half, yeah, mm-hmm. two, yeah for uh, driving offences. Yeah. He, he went right down to about 18 or 19 stone, right? I went to visit him <laughs> in mm-hmm. prison, right? And uh, being one of this family, uh, we went to Joseph, so we went to visit him. And when he co- come in on the visit, Bloody hell, because he, he, he was fucking huge, and, he, and he'd lost about three or four straw. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't pumping any hormones yeah, or yeah. juice into him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but he looked, so he said, I said, fucking hell. He just looked, looked like, but it, he was like 15, 18, 18, 19 stone. But he just, he looked small compared to what he was, but he was, still he was like, a gym on, yeah. he was still massive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, one day he phoned me up, he says, uh, Richie, any chance of doing us a favour? He says, well, he says, a friend of mine's just had a parrot nicked. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he says, the family are heartbroken. <laughs> I said, parrot? So what do you want me to do there? Like? He says, oh, can you make inquiries, man? It's over your way. Fucking hardly pulled blah, blah. I says, right. Anyway, in the paper, he was the family heartbroken over the parrot. Someone had beggled the house and some baggage had beggled the house, shot the parrot and sold it on. So anyway, found out who done it. Found out where the parrot was. <laughs> Went to the geezer. The, I think the geezer paid a few quid for this parrot off mm-hmm. this beggar. Mm-hmm. 
I said, well, tough, tough shit, mate. You've lost the parrot now. You're not, because the, the bloke didn't know it was stolen. Yeah. So I said, well, you've lost it because that parrot belongs to this family. I said, there's the parrot in the paper there. I want that parrot. That's going back to the family. He says, really? He says, oh, can I come? He says, can I come to to the house with you? I says, yeah. So the keys are what the came to the he must have thought and I was gonna take the parrot and sell it sell yeah, it on yeah, to someone yeah, else. Yeah. So anyway, he come with us. Took back the family and said, He's the parrot. Oh, they were off the moan buzzing. So they got the parrot back, put the I can't I don't have a parrot parrot's name, but <laughs> <laughs> Long John Silver. <laughs> anyway, in the I said the she says the male will want to know, you know the paper. We want to know about the success story and, and how did I get the parrot back? I said, well, keep my name out of it. I don't want no publicity. So mm. anyway, the, it was in the mail re night with the parrot and all mm. that. <laughs> and phone, I said, oh, thanks for that, big favour. And, and uh, people, <laughs> people take the face and say, well, Richie Arsley, pet detective. <laughs> <laughs> 